Hi, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. I'm continuing on with the fill your freezer challenge and we are going to be working on some freezer meal breakfasts for those crazy back to school mornings. So today I'm going to be sharing with you three of my family's favorite breakfast freezer meals. We're going to be making breakfast burritos and a bacon croissant casserole as well as some sausage cheese balls. And then I will also show you at the end something that I made a few days ago that I've stuck in the freezer already, um, my favorite recipe for blueberry muffins. So we're going to get started with the breakfast burritos. I'm going to be making one of our family's favorite, other favorite breakfast casseroles. And then I'm gonna be using that casserole as filling for the breakfast burritos. It also is great on its own, but this will just give us kind of two breakfast casseroles, um, but not, not necessarily needing to eat just breakfast casseroles for all of our breakfasts. So to start out, the only prep that I've really done is to pull out things from the freezer so they could thaw. And then I also, and then I also browned um, a pound of sausage and cooked it with an onion, a diced onion. And I just have been letting that drain and cool. And then we're gonna get started on this breakfast casserole first. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill a nine by 13 pan. I'm gonna spray it and then I'm going to fill it with tater tots. Um, I'm gonna line them up just because I like how that looks, but you can also just totally toss them in there if you want to do that as well. The original recipe calls for 24 ounces of these, but I always just do however many fill my pan. of the tater tots, we are going to add the sausage and onion mixture. You can also do um, a bell pepper. You can saute that with your meat and your onion. I just didn't have one um, today, but we also really like it with bell peppers in it as well. Okay, next we're gonna add two cups of cheese on top. Okay, and then next we're going to make our egg mixture that we're going to whip up and pour over the top of the casserole. Okay, so for the egg mixture, you are going to need six eggs. Okay, so for the egg mixture, you are going to need six eggs. Okay, and then we're going to add a cup of milk I have some heavy cream that I need to use. So I'm gonna be using that instead. But I've made it with both heavy cream, half and half, regular milk, and they're all wonderful. Okay, and then we also need to add half a cup of sour cream. And I just kind of eyeball that. Sometimes I add a little bit extra. And then you just need to whisk all of this up. You can use regular whisk. I really like using my hand beaters. <clears throat> After it's mixed up a little bit, you can also add your spices. Um, I'm just gonna do salt and pepper today, but you can also add extra onion powder if you want, or garlic powder, or whatever else you like. All right, then we're just gonna pour our egg mixture kind of as evenly as you can over the top of the rest of your casserole. Now, the original recipe says that you can let this, that you need to let this soak. Um, you can let it soak for up to 18 hours, I think. Um, I usually don't let it soak just because I'm impatient and don't wanna make it the night before. Um, so I usually just put it straight in from this state. So we're gonna put this in the oven at 350. You are, the original recipe says to bake it covered for 25 minutes and then uncovered for 30 minutes. I usually just leave it uncovered and bake it for at least an hour and just check it after about an hour and see kind of how it's looking. Um, you'll want it to not be jiggly and have it be set and golden brown on the top and that's how you will know that it's done. 
Okay, next we're gonna be working on the bacon croissant breakfast casserole. And to start off with this, you need to cut up and dice enough croissants to fill the bottom of a nine by 13 pan. The original recipe says to toast them and to kind of get them nice and toasty and dried out a little bit. Um, it does make the recipe better, but when I'm going for speed, <laughs> it still tastes wonderful if you skip that step. So today I'm gonna to be skipping that step. I'll make sure to link um, the recipes that I am using today in the description box below if you want to try them out for yourself. Um, so today I'm just gonna start by cutting up the croissants, putting them in the pan, and then we will work on the topping and the egg mixture for that. So today I'm using croissants from Costco. Um, lots of times in the past, whenever I see croissants on like my grocery store's bread cart, um, I usually just use those just because they're getting kind of old and dried out anyways. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of chop them and slice them into about bite-sized pieces. Um, also, whenever I get croissants, if I get too many of them, lots of times I'll just chop them up and freeze them in bags. You can also just tear these up if you want or if you want your kids to help you. That's a job that my girls really like doing. But they are out at a community event tonight with my husband so that I could have a couple hours to get these done by myself without any extra help. My whole family really loves these. Um, for this recipe, after it's done cooking, you can cook it or you can bake it just in like your foil pan, um, like a foil nine by 13 pan, and then just freeze that whole thing if you want to. Um, what I'm going to do is after it's done cooking and it's cooled, I'm gonna cut it into individual pieces and I'm just going to freeze those individual individual pieces. I'll wrap them probably in saran wrap and then put them, um, all the pieces in like a big freezer Ziploc bag. That way we can just take one piece out at a time um, for whoever wants to have that as their breakfast. So that was about four and a half um, of the large croissants from Costco to fill up this entire uh, casserole dish. Now again, this recipe is another one where you can soak it overnight. Um, it does disintegrate the croissants and so you get like the flavor of croissants but not as much texture and I found that I like to feel and taste the texture of the croissants. So I'm not going to, again, this is another one I'm not going to soak. You can do it if you want to. Um, it's just not something I'm going to do today. Okay, right, on top of the croissants, I'm going to add some bacon pieces. You can cut, you can click and cut your own bacon, crumble your own bacon. I just bought this bag from Costco, um, just for convenience. So I'm just going to sprinkle a couple handfuls on top. The original recipe calls for like eight to 10 strips, but I just kind of sprinkle whatever looks good to me. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is work on the egg mixture to pour over the top of this. So I'm just gonna use the same measuring cup uh, mixing bowl that I was using before since it's a lot of very similar ingredients. First, what we need is we need to do nine eggs. Okay, next to this, we're gonna add two cups of milk and one cup of heavy cream. You can also do just do three cups of straight milk or a mixture of milk, half and half cream, whatever you have on hand. I haven't done it with non-dairy milk before. Um, I've always just used dairy milk because my family is fine um, eating that. Um, so I'm not sure how non-dairy milk would work, but you can try it. And you can also check out the comments on the original recipe and they probably have some good ideas of what other people have used and done and have been successful with. Okay, so here's my one cup of cream. And then we're gonna add my two cups of milk. And then if you are cooking bacon, you can also fry up an onion or a shallot with that. Since I'm not cooking up bacon, um, I don't want to get out of pan just to caramelize and cook an onion. So I'm just going to use some minced onion and just put that in with my liquid so that they can start to rehydrate and then it will give that nice onion flavor. You can also just use onion powder um, in here if you want to and if you don't have min minced onion or don't want the texture of minced onion. Um, also to this liquid you're going to add your spices. So if you want to add garlic powder, um, onion powder, whatever you want to. Again, I'm just going to use salt and pepper because that's what we like. I'm just going to 
use my hand mixer again to whisk all this up. Okay, now that that is all mixed together, I'm going to pour it over my casserole. Again, trying to do it as evenly as I can. Okay, I'm also going to top this with about two cups of cheese. Uh, you can use whatever, again, whatever kind you like. I'm just using a Mexican style blend just because it has a couple of different uh, flavors already in it. Okay, and then this you're also going to put in a 350 degree oven for 45 to 50 minutes. Um, the instructions do say to put a foil lined pan underneath to catch any possible drips or spillage, which sometimes can happen. So I'll stick this in the oven with my other casserole and put my pan down and then we'll get started on our third recipe. Okay, for our third recipe, we are going to be doing sausage cheese balls. These are really good for quick, easy breakfasts as well as appetizers they're really good for. So I'm gonna be making a double batch because usually when I make these, my family loves them. <laughs> And it's not that much harder to make a double batch as it is to make a single batch. So the amounts that I'm going to be putting in are for a doubled recipe, but I'll just put the single recipe down in the description box if you just wanna make a single batch worth. So to start out, we need three cups of bisquick. We're also going to need a cup of Parmesan cheese and a cup of milk. We're also going to add eight cups of cheese is what the recipe is is what the recipe calls for doubled um, i'm going to add i'm going to start with about six and then see how it looks i might add some more or six might be good enough if you want them extra cheesy definitely use the full amount um, i've also been able to cut back on the cheese um, to like three cups or so per recipe two to three cups and it still tastes really good just not quite as soft and chewy as if you use the full amount of cheese so I just have this four cup um, bag that I'm just gonna use all of this and then I'll see what I have left over from what I've used in my other recipes to see how much else, how much more I want to add to it. Okay, so I've added about six cups and I don't have that much cheese left in here so I'm just gonna finish adding the rest of it. And I'm going to add my spices. So you need parsley, parsley, onion powder, and garlic powder is what I like to add. But again, you can add to these whatever you want. If you're using a flavored um, sausage, you might be able to cut back on the seasonings um, or adapt the seasonings to whatever you are, uh, whatever kind of sausage you're using. I lots of times just use the regular um, is what my family likes. Um, I've also used the, state, the sage before. Um, the sage is really good with rosemary if you want to use the sage sausage. I'm gonna add my sausage and the easiest way for me to mix this up is to just use my hands. So I like to use just some disposable gloves and that makes the mixing much easier and it's much easier to get off of my hands so it doesn't stick. All right, and then I'm just using, again, my biggest bowl because I'm doing a double batch, and then I'm just gonna mix it with my hands until everything's all combined. Mm -hmm. If you feel like your mix is a little bit too dry, you can always add more milk. <clears throat> and if it's too wet, you can always add more Bisquick just to kind of get it to the right texture that you want. You want it to be able to um, clump together and stay like in a ball without being too sticky. All right, so that's the consistency that you're going to want. I'm just gonna tidy up my counter and then show you how we scoop these out and get these ready to cook. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna use a standard sized cookie scoop and I'm just gonna scoop out the mixture and put them onto parchment lined rimmed pans. Make sure that they're rimmed because there is a lot of grease that comes out from your sausage. So just make sure you have a rim on your pan so it doesn't spill into your oven and cause a fire. If you want to make these pretty, you can like actually take them out and roll them with your hands, but my family doesn't care. So again, I'm trying to do these. So we've been working for about 30 to 45 minutes so far, and we already have two of our uh, breakfast freezer meals in the oven. And we're working on our third. And as soon as those are out, my casseroles are out of the oven, I can pop these guys in. They're also gonna be cooked at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. And then to store these, what I do is I just let them cool all the way. And then I just put them in gallon size um, freezer bags and just stick them in my freezer. Um, you can flash freeze them if you want to. I've never really had trouble with them sticking together as long as they cool all the way beforehand. Then whenever you need some in the morning for breakfast, you can just pop out what you need and microwave them for about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on if you, depending on how many you have and if they're thawed or not. My husband really likes them in the air fryer. Um, so if you wanna do them in the air fryer and you're doing it from frozen, I would take them out, microwave them for like 30 seconds, and then put them in the air fryer at 350 for two or three minutes. And then they get kind of crispy. I like them a little bit softer, so I just prefer to microwave them. Um, and the best way to get them evenly heated is if you put them on a microwave safe plate and put them in a circle um, and then heat them up that way. And typically for me and my husband, we eat anywhere between like five and eight for like a very full, like satisfying breakfast. My girls usually eat between two and five, depending on how hungry they are. Okay, I'm gonna finish loading up these trays and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. Okay, so here we have our two trays of sausage cheese balls are all done and ready for the oven. As soon as my casseroles are done, I will pop these guys in. And then once everything's out, I'll show you what it all looks like and how I'm going to assemble the breakfast burritos and get things ready to go in the freezer. Okay, so here are both of my casseroles. Over here, we have the tater tot sausage one that I'm gonna be using as filling for breakfast burritos. And then over here, I have the bacon croissant one that I'm just cutting into individual portion, portions that I will freeze. So once these have cooled off a little bit more, then I will show you how I'm gonna package them up for the freezer. So I cut my casserole up, and now I'm just going to put it inside of these tortillas. Um, these are burrito size, but you can use whatever size you want to. Uh, these will mostly be for my husband and myself. My daughters don't love breakfast burritos. Um, they'll eat them if we're having them like for dinner, but they're not always their number one favorite. So, I'm just gonna lay out a few of these tortillas. And then I'm just gonna top them with some of the casserole and some extra cheese to kind of help like hold it together. And then I will roll them up and wrap them in plastic wrap.
Okay, so here you can see that I am packaging up the breakfast croissant bacon casserole. I'm just cut it into slices and then I'm putting that on to saran wrap and then I'm just wrapping those up individually. And then from there, I will just put them in a gallon Ziploc bag and stick that in the freezer. Um, if you want to have this thawed, you can pull it out the night before. And then when you're ready to eat it, you can just put it in the microwave, unwrap it from the saran wrap and cook it for about a minute to a minute 30. Um, if it's frozen, I would do probably a minute 30 to two minutes. And then it's a super quick, easy morning breakfast. So here's everything that we got done this evening. I got eight breakfast burritos done. I got a full gallon bag plus a quart bag of the sausage cheese balls, as well as about 12 to 15 pieces of that breakfast casserole. And then here is the recipe for my favorite blueberry muffins. What you're going to need is some sour cream. You will also need milk and flour and you will need sugar and baking soda. It also calls for vanilla and baking powder as well as salt and a stick of butter, eggs, and blueberries. So first you're going to cream together your half cup of butter as well as your one and one quarter cups of sugar. I'm just using my hand mixer for this, but you can use a stand mixer if you want to, or you can just hand mix it as well. I just like to cream using an electric um, hand mixer or my big stand mixer just because it makes it a lot creamier. And then you're also going to add your two eggs and one teaspoon of vanilla. And again, mix those ingredients together until they are all well incorporated and nice and fluffy. And then you are going to add one cup of sour cream. And I'll make sure that I leave this recipe down in the description box as well as the other recipes that I have been using today. Um, this recipe, you're also going to add um, a quarter cup of milk and then mix those things to combine until you have your nice liquidy mixture all ready for your muffins. And then you're going to add two and a half cups of flour and two tablespoons of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and a half teaspoon of salt. And then I just switched over to my Danish dough whisk to mix the batter together just so I didn't over mix it. And then once that's all mixed together, you are going to add in two cups of blueberries that have been washed and destemmed. And then you're just going to gently fold those in until they're all incorporated into your batter. So this recipe makes two dozen regular size muffins. Today I did um, some regular size muffins as well as some mini muffins. I kind of overfilled some of my muffins because I was missing two of my uh, silicone muffin wrappers. I was, and so I was able to overfill some of these mini muffins, but I could have easily gotten a dozen regular muffins and two dozen mini muffins. My girls just do better with the mini muffins. So that's why I like to make a mixture of both when I am making muffins. So here's what they look like coming out. You can see that some of those mini ones were overfilled. Um, and then after these are completely cool, I'll just stick them in the freezer. So that's everything I made for the freezer breakfasts for me and my family for the next probably six to eight weeks is usually how long they last us. If you have any other good uh, breakfast freezer meal ideas, make sure you leave them in the comments for me to look at and try. And if you have liked this series, um, let me know in the comments below as well. And I would be happy to do more freezer meal videos for you guys and give you even more ideas for breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.